Are you stuck? How about unhappy? Join Elena Chapman, author, mentor, and life coach for Magical Moments with Elena as she challenges you to get out of the doldrum and start living your life to the fullest. Elena will help you take control of your life and push you to do the things you never thought you'd do. So get ready to take back your power and celebrate life with Magical Moments featuring Elena Chapman. Welcome to Magical Moments for that ease and that betterment in your life. And I'm your host, Elena Chapman. And yes, most of the country, we are cold. (laughs) And you know what? It is beautiful, at least. We have, at least where I am, guys, it's so much beautiful sun. There's really nothing to complain about when you have that beautiful sun. And I have a little magical nugget for you because we are going to be celebrating love, love, love. And what a better thing than love in our life. And what? Even better if we began to love who we are. I mean, seriously, if we love who we are, we have to be with ourselves 24 hours a day. We have to, we are the ones we depend on ourselves to cast the dreams. We depend on ourselves to form the relationships. We are ourselves. It is us that creates our daily routines and our life and how we handle situations and conflicts. My gosh, guys, the one thing you can depend on is that you have yourself. In fact, you can't leave it behind. So why are we not forming that beautiful relationship with ourselves where we accept love and want to grow within ourselves. Why aren't we counting ourselves as our own perfect soulmate? I know that sounds like you're probably giggling. How can that be? Well, now listen. There's a little bit here, a soulmate. A soulmate is something, uh, that perfect someone that is always with you. Well, guess who's always with you? You. (laughs) A soulmate is someone that challenges you to grow. Well, who else can challenge you to grow better that knows you the best than you? Okay, granted. Well, you can cuddle up with yourself in a beautiful blanket with a hot cup of chocolate and watch your favorite movie without any complaints because it's you, another best soulmate. But it is fun to have that other person in your life. And I'm not saying that we don't discount that person. But here's the really cool thing. When we take the time to become accepting, loving, we do the work to forgive ourselves for the things that we felt we have done and we start to love the aspects of ourselves that we thought were unlovable. Then all of a sudden when we do, well, we become our best soulmate, but when we do that, all of a sudden, guess what? That real soulmate walks into our life. Yep. Because it's on the vibration. It's so funny. We want someone to complete us, but who, we, who really needs to complete us is us. You got to check out Hello Soul. And this isn't an average. Well, I'm mentioning it. Hello Soul is a book I wrote. And I was at the point when I said, I really want to learn how to live from my soul. I had, I had forgiven enough. I had done the things to hear the soul. Like I'd be in the car and say, hey, are you there? And I'd hear in a very, very small voice, yes, I'm here, Elena. And I thought, oh, my gosh, this is exciting. I want to develop this. I want to grow with this. And so I went through, I had incredible teachers, shamans, just people that are just, everywhere I went, I found people to teach me how to go on this journey of living by my soul, a total love of who I am in every respect. And I wrote it in the book, Hello Soul. So you're going to be following my journey. If you want a copy of that book, by the way, I just to whoa, whoa listeners, because I love you so. And I have and podcast listeners. (laughs) I love you, too. 
If you are on WoWo, or even if you're not, if you're on the podcast, you can still text 46862, 46862, and receive that Hello Soul book. And the only thing I ask, and it's really needed, guys, is uh, a review on Google. Not Google, Amazon. Yeah, if you'll write a review. Hopefully a nice one, but if you didn't like the book, I'm not going to ask you to do that. Again, 46862, and we'll get you a book, okay? Now, beginning to love ourselves. And I know there's a lot of people out there who say, but you don't know, Elena. You just don't know. So I have a wonderful guest here for you. Her name is Krista, and she is a creator and host of I'm Awake Now. What? <laughs> I absolutely love that title. And I was on her show. It was, it, it's just, I love it. So now you're awake. So now what, right? Incepted in 2018 as an audio community for anyone who is on the path of spirituality, healing, and personal development. Yeah, you really do have to check out that show with her. At the age of 28, Krista decided to walk away from her religion of origin after suffering from religious trauma and wounding. That happens a lot, folks. She would spend the next six years studying religion, philosophy, psychology, and spirituality in search of answers and healing and a way to regenerate fully into her humanity and divinity. After emerging from this experience, her focus has been to help others heal and come home to themselves, yes, by teaching the path of liberation, integration, and inner peace. Her first nonfiction book, The Alchemy of Kindness, ooh, I like that, Krista, will be out summer 2022, at the end of 2021. Ah, and she, Krista also created Lightcasting, a podcast network for spiritual podcast shows and content. Oh, that's nice to know. And with that, hello, Krista. Hello, Elena. Thank you for having me on the show today. And I love you dearly, but let's give him your whole name because I did not want to screw it up. So <laughs> say it once for everyone. Okay. My name is Krista Ziomara. Ziomara. I love it, and I wanted to make sure we got that in there, but I didn't want to screw it up. So okay. it's really not that hard. It's just when you look at it, it looks more complicated. So let's chat, my dear. You understand trauma, and I guess let's, let's begin with yours because that is your story and which led you to helping others deal with trauma successfully. So why is it you do what you do? Yeah, thank you for that beautiful question. You know, I, I think a lot of us experience trauma, and when it's happening, we don't know that that's what's going on. No, and you until don't. We find, yeah. yeah, and until we find the language and the separation from the situation, we have clarity about that. And I... I'm a Cancerian, and I have a lot of feels, and I'm very sensitive. Yeah. And so for a very long time, I was carrying all of this garbage around from my religious experience that was a, a cultic religious experience. And Well, what was it? Of, and, what kind of stuff? So I, yeah, so I, grew, so I grew up in um, a Catholic offshoot um, ran by a priest out in the outskirts of New Mexico, and it was very austere. Um, I would I like to describe it as kind of like if you think about the Waco Ranch Davidian meets like Amish people, that's kind of what <laughs> my upbringing was like. <laughs> wow, that is quite an image. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's pretty and strict. That very yeah, very strict. Very much suppression of the feminine. You know, we were taught very early on that like. Women are not good. Cover up your body. Don't wear makeup. Um, just really awful messaging. So all but the why of, is that? Why is there are so many religions that really want to demonize women? I mean, they want you to. They see you as this horrible thing, but yet they can't do without you. 
and yeah. and yet they they just they want you as property. They want you to hide. They want your hair. Oh my gosh, you got to cover that hair. And when you get married, you have to cut it off. What in the heck? Why do we have? Why? I've seen more women damaged that mm-hmm. don't believe in themselves, that are going out in the world. There are some religions that even say you can't go to heaven unless your husband mentions your name. What is that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, and those, you know, the, the, the genesis of all of that is Abrahamic religion, which we get the Christian arm and the Muslim arm. And they're, what, they're two sides of the same, you know, coin, essentially. Um, in terms yeah. Of supp- yeah, in terms of suppressing the feminine. And what what I understood after I came out of my religious experience is the, there's so much bad about religion. And I, I'm, I'm the really dogmas, hesitant yeah. to say... Yeah, I'm really hesitant to say that there's anything good because I see more harm being done than good. But um, when you start in a religion at a very early age, because we don't have language and context and understanding, all of our messaging is indirect. So we're watching and observing and picking up all of these indirect messages and shame and guilt and, um, you know, self-flagellation from people, you know, verbally or physically that that shows you you're inherently sinful and, you know, separated from God as an individual. And all of that really messes you up. (laughs) Yeah, it does. You know, there's, I don't know how else to say it, but it messes you up and it messed me up a lot. And it made me very confused. It made me very confused about my femininity. It made me very confused about my sexuality. It made me very confused about, do I need to be dominated by a man or can I have my own life? And yes. those six years in the bio that you read was me trying to answer that question for myself. And basically, to your nugget that you said at the beginning of the, the show love. is that, yeah, yeah I, I didn't love myself. No. You know, I did not love myself because the world and my religion and my family had said there's nothing there to love. <gasps> because there's Oh, my God, that hurts me. Things. That so hurts me. I I just, I mean, I understand, I understand because I've seen it over and over, but it's still, it just, it's like an arrow shoots through my heart Mm -hmm. (laughs) to have a little girl and a young woman that, that is so demeaned in so many ways Mm -hmm. that she cannot love who she is. How in the heck is she supposed to love anyone else? Mm Mm-hmm. You know, truly love. A lot of healing. (laughs) It is a lot of healing. And you've done the work. Yeah, and I think that that was the next step is is that, you know, recognizing that something needs to be healed and having the courage and the tenacity to stay with it. I know, as you you know very well, Alina, when we go on our healing journeys, it's not fun. (laughs) It can be hard. It's hard work. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hard work, but because it's hard to face all of the conditioning, you know, a lot of, a lot of the garbage that separates us from that self-love that is, that is there for us always, it's always available to us. We just, we lose touch with it um, through our conditioning and through what society tells us, what we should be, how we should present and what, what we can expect from our lives. But going on that healing path next is really the, the, the critical piece in, in it's scary, isn't it? Restoring, you know, it's, it's kind because of, it's it's an area you don't know. You don't have enough, you don't have enough courage in yourself because you don't have enough of a self esteem to be able to say, okay, I can do this. So it's it makes it doubly hard, but yet it's the thing that's most really? needed. I will say though, the one good thing, and and if this helps someone out there to make that decision, is that the Every step is a step more into freedom, more mm-hmm. into that self-love. And because, see, the stuff holds you. It's like, it's like you put chains around yourself. You are bound. It affects every single part of your life, every relationship, every choice you make, how you live. Everything is affected by that damage you have had in your life. Mm-hmm. So it it, yeah, it it becomes the lens in which we view the world. It is, and it affects. And so every time you heal, it's like you're removing a chain. Mm-hmm. I that's how I think of it. That's a beautiful visual. 
Well, thank you. So how do you, uh, what is the first step you started with, except for making the decision, of course? Yeah, the first decision was that I knew I couldn't do it without, you know, real help, like real professional help. So I got myself into therapy um, because I I didn't know how to address all of it. And I, yeah. and more than anything, at the time of my break from my religion of origin, I was coming into contact with the idea of karma. And karma is more than what we think about in terms of like this for that. Karma is also about non-action, meaning like I'm not going to lash out on you or project my stuff onto you because it hurts me too. You know, it's, it's that inaction. And I, I remember studying my yogic text and Buddhist text and thinking, I want to heal myself in such a way that I don't ever operate from that wounded space and hurt someone else. That yeah. was like my, my motivation. Yeah. And so going first into therapy and then supplementing with um, all of my self-education and the yogic ashram and, and sitting in compassionate, loving kindness practice, which is a huge tenet of Buddhism, yes, and it really is. Yeah. letting myself feel the depths of my own love, no matter what my parents thought of me for leaving my religion of origin or, or getting divorced or all the things that I wasn't supposed to do. Um, and knowing that I was okay, you know, like that's one thing where we tend to look outside and think, you know, look to other people to affirm that we're okay, but coming into that internal well of I'm okay, I'm loved, I'm held, I'm supported, I belong here, I matter, those yeah. kinds of things. I have a loving, I always, I love them. I have a uh, shamanic journey I do with people that brings them up to be held in the hand of the universe. And I always find that, yeah, that to feel that love, to feel that support, to feel that you cannot fall, that that is an incredible feeling. And it's along the same lines as the Buddha and the Tao which teach a lot of healing love for, for, for yourself and, and acceptance. And that's basically what you are learning. And it is, you know, it, it is funny. I know that there's some traumas for people that, well, they, they block it. You know what I mean? Yes. But yet it's still affecting their, their psyche. There are things that happen in the childhood that they just totally block. They definitely need a therapist. There's no doubt about that. But sometimes I wonder, it's just not their time, but yet you can work around it and and help them have the self-worth and the strength like you're doing. And then when they're ready, it will reveal itself. I yeah. don't know. What are your thoughts on that? Some things are so bad. You're just, your mind cannot take it, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. And I, so I, I, I was, um, given up for adoption when I was a baby and I spent the first five years of my life in orphanages uh -huh. and I actually had that exact same thing happen and foster care excuse me where when I when I was around 26 there were all these memories that returned from a sexual trauma as a child that I didn't even know had happened so you're right in the sense that like our mind and I think the mind is such a beautiful like space to allow us when we're ready to address things to your yes. point yes like it knows when we're ready to see something and it'll bring it forward and I think that was right around the same time I was having this big disruption in my life and and I think to your to answer your question I I've been told many times that we're all sort of on the path of awakening it just you know everyone is even if it doesn't yes. look like it and that awakening to our own trauma or things that need to be healed, they do reveal themselves in time. And I think one thing I want to really relate to the listeners is that it can be it can be hard. What I said earlier, also because if you go against the grain of society, your family, religion, whatever it is that was traumatizing to you, the support you have sometimes cannot be there, and that takes a lot of courage. So it's important as well, I want to just mention, when you go on a healing journey to get great support along the way, like Elena's books and her podcasts or people that, communities that she's built, people you can talk to about that as well, because you will need that in your healing journey, because the people in your ecosystem who aren't working on healing will not understand, and that can no. be great isolating 
And even more than that, they will try to keep you in the damage because they don't. Yeah. And it's not because they're awful people. It's it's because they really, honest to God, ha, don't know any better. And exactly. they think this is the way. They think this mm-hmm. is how it. And there are people who like very rigid. They, they like rigidity. They, mm-hmm. It gives them safety. But for many of us, that's not what our soul is calling for. And and we want that acceptance. We want to, especially if we're a creative sort. My God, you would die in that rigidity. You would die right. in it. You can't do it. And you're a creative sort. There's no way you'd survive that. And so you're stepping out of something that you have lived. It's very hard. Your whole perception has been built around this damage. You have got to reach out to someone. I've done that. I reached out. um, Well, when I first got divorced, I was I, I thought to myself, wait a minute. I want to make this experience as seamless and and as healthy as I can for my boys. And I, I got to get my head on straight. And not only that, I have to figure out why in the heck I allowed myself to do what others said and get into a situations twice, not once. I fell in that hole twice <laughs> to marry who my, yeah, who my parents feel is right. And and uh, so they picked them out more than I did, and mm-hmm. to to allow myself to go into that world that kept me in their world, which you know it had some good, but there was some stuff that I needed to grow past. Mostly a lot of stuff with my mom, unfortunately. And why was I? Why was I just keep? Why did I keep falling in the same hole? I need to find that out. So I went to an intuitive psychologist, an incredible person. And she was so intuitive that she could help me on a spiritual level too, help me start to develop my gifts, but also to heal, to heal that side of me that felt I had to have that control in my life, which I didn't need that control, you know, of another person Mm -hmm. controlling me. So getting away from that was I had to start to love myself. I had to go on a journey. I had to break away from feeling that I had to believe in myself, that I could run my own life without everyone telling me exactly how to do every step. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You need to have that that support system. Yeah. And that mother wound speaking directly to the female listeners is something that is really deeply embedded in our Abrahamic culture. And because our mothers are being taught, whether they're close to religion or not, there's still this patriarchal overtone. Yeah, that very still yang. suppresses yeah. women. Yeah. And yeah. so we see our mothers and our grandmothers living a life that we think we should emulate. And so a lot of us are walking around with this deep mother womb. Uh, you know, uh, W O N D. You know, they were not not their actual womb <laughs> inside them, but their wound. And it's and a lot of us don't know that that's also what requires healing on this journey in order to integrate the feminine fully into us and really hone into our relationship with our divine self. Basically, you're I right. That you mentioned that you are a hundred percent right. The woman is where we learn to be a woman. The mother is how we learn. And if the mother is so ingrained in what she believes in that, which my mom was, she they resent, literally resent you Mm -hmm. breaking free. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they will try. I guarantee, folks, they will try to berate you in little ways to keep you down and in with them. They just will. And they don't even know they're doing it. So you can't blame them. They don't. They really don't understand what they're doing. Yeah, and that subconscious resentment comes from a, an unconscious, like how could she do that? Like who does she think she is? Who does she think she's she is? This other life. Yeah, <laughs> I heard that a lot. <laughs> and it's all unconscious, you know. Or in your case, if it, they're consciously saying that to you, there's an unconscious desire for them to break away as well. And so that that tugging back into the space and the conditioning and like don't get out of this space is very common. And I think we owe it to ourselves to 
acknowledge that this is sort of something that's happening a lot in our feminine culture. Yeah, it really is. It really is. And we owe it to ourselves. And I'll only lend one last comment. I really think what I I find that happens is when we fear something, we have to contain it. And for some reason, the yang kind of culture, and I'm not saying men, I'm saying just that power, for some reason got on steroids and for some reason feared the yin or the feminine. And it just totally, in every respect, not just the female, but yet we are the physical form of that, but also meditation, that was banned in religion so much, except for the practices of Buddhism and Tao, and the practices kept it, but religion got rid of it, changed it to prayer, and prayer only by the priest or the the minister. You know, everything was controlled, every part of the feminine which is the yin part of us, which is the, the, the one that gets insight, is contained. Mm-hmm. And the one that can reach that the fastest was the yin in a woman. And that had to be contained. Yep. Interesting, isn't it? And I'm yeah. sure I am going to get lots of comments now on that. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, I just set myself up for that. But <laughs> but my dear, how can people find out more about you? They can come listen to the podcast because I'm always talking about these things. Of course, they can go to my website, iwpodcast.com, and um, shoot me a message over there. And guys, like I said, you deserve this love for you, and it is possible. It really is. Until next week, guys, let the light start to shine on you. Guys, namaste. We love you. This has been Magical Moments with Elena featuring Elena Chapman. If you missed an episode, download it now on iTunes, Spotify, TuneIn, CastBox, Deezer, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, or your favorite podcast platform. Learn more online at soulmanifesto.com. 